Welcome back to my favorite tropes on Speeder TV. I don't know why my voice is deeper than normal right now, but okay. What is a deus ex machina? Of course, we're going to TV tropes that'll work for the answer here. Literally, the term is Latin for God out of the machine, originating from ancient Greek theater scenes, where a crane would be used to lower actors or statues playing gods who would come into the story and fix the situation. Now, what does it mean today? Well, TV Tropes sets out four requirements for a plot development to be a deus ex machina. Number one, they are solutions to a problem, not something that makes the situation worse or some other sort of twist. Two, they are sudden or unexpected. It might be referenced or featured earlier, but it doesn't seem like a viable solution until it solves the problem. Number three, the situations they resolve are seen as unsolvable or hopeless. And number four, deus ex machina are external to the characters and their choices. That meaning that if it's a character that solves a problem, that character has had little to no influence on the plot until that moment. Or if it's an outside influence, it's up to random chance or something like that. So pretty much, oh no, what are we gonna do? Oh wait, we're saved! And that's it. And understandably, Deus Ex Machina are typically thought of pretty negatively. But some of the most popular and well-regarded movies in history have them. Think about the T-Rex at the end of Jurassic Park, who just shows up out of nowhere in the visitor center and eats up the raptors. There is no way for a T-Rex to sneak into a visitor center unnoticed. But most people let it go because, well, it's pretty cool. Or think about the end of The Wizard of Oz. The Scarecrow's on fire and Dorothy throws some water on him and accidentally puts the dot on the triple W. You get it? She's a, she's, she's the Wicked Witch of the West. It's three W's, like WW dot, and like a dot at the end, like a period, like punctuation, like finality. She, she finished her. <laughs> but it's like, oh, wow, oh, no, I'm allergic to water or whatever. It makes me melt. And oh, no, all these people who are protecting me are glad I'm gone and they won't stop you guys from getting out of here. It's an iconic ending, but it's definitely a deus ex machina. And then there's one of my favorite movies that I don't think is good, Spider-Man 3. Specifically, the part where Harry's butler, Bernard, reveals to him the truth about his father's death. And that leads, of course, to Harry turning around and being a good guy and helping out Spider-Man slash Peter in the final battle. So this guy who's been here saying nothing of importance for two and three quarters of a movie just out of nowhere shows up and says, The night your father died, I cleaned his wounds. The blade that pierced his body came from his glider. There's no question, your father died by his own hand. And then Harry's just like, oh, okay, cool, thanks for telling me. I'll... I'll go help my best friend then kind of give up on this whole revenge thing I've had going on for the past few years while you've lived in this house not telling me anything. Okay, all right, thank you, bro. Personally, I prefer how Harry responded and how it should have ended, but we're talking about the actual movie here. And actually, no, we're not talking about anything because I'm done. Video is over. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, dislike even. And uh, see you next week. Whatever, whatever next week's video is.